And now, weighing in out of the blue corner, Josh the Pong Thompson. 100% agree. And on the other mic, he weighs in from the red corner, Big John McCarthy. Obviously, there's been a lot of talk and buzz about the fact that Cleo Roundtree's got the power. He's got the power to potentially starch Alex. And if I'm looking at the betting odds, the betting odds don't suggest that at all. You know, when I look at some of these betting odds, it's talking about the odds being so much favorable to, to Alex. And I'm not going to, you know, uh, I'm just going to simply say Khalil's got the power. We know that. But does he have the ability and the technique to get to Alex's chin? Um, I mean, I'm, I'm of the view that, like, you know what? Like, for example, you guys have been around long enough to notice this. Like, we're living in a different era now where guys are winning a few weight uh, or the, they'll win a weight class title. They'll defend once or twice, and then they've got their right. eyes set on going up a division. And we come from an era where that just didn't happen for a lot of different reasons. Guys would win and then just stand a post as long as they could for challenger after challenger. And what you found doing that, I think you guys might agree with this, is that sometimes like you would look around and it would be like, you know, what was one of Mighty Mouse's? He won it, but like, what was one of his tougher fights? It was who was the the, the kid who came up uh, Elliot. Got down from. Tim Elliott, Tim Elliott. Down from 35 yeah. or you know we live in a world where I remember exactly where I was when Matt Sarah got the win over GSP and yeah. it was like how could this even happen and I'm not suggesting to you like that is inevitable I'm not predicting one of those things but just that maintaining a weight class title is one of the most difficult things to do iteration after iteration because you, that is the biggest day of Khalil Roundtree's life. And of course, it's a big day for Alex Pereira, but it's not the biggest fight he's been in, not by a million miles. And so any kind of small error with those gloves where a guy, as you noted, big right hook, big left straight, big overhand left for Khalil Roundtree, he does plant. That's going to make him available to be targeted with leg kicks and front kicks mm -hmm. and everything else. But like a little mistake and like obviously anything can go up in smoke. So I agree with you that like, you know, um, he, he's not much of a pursuer from the footwork standpoint. He doesn't cage cut in that way. He kind of lets the fight come to him a little bit. There is a little bit of evasive footwork. So, you know, just speaking about th this is what I always say. If Khalil Roundtree and Alex uh, Pereira fought a hundred times, you might say, hey, you know, uh, Poton's going to win 80 to 90 percent of them. But that means there's going to be 10 to 20 times mm -hmm. where Khalil Roundtree would win. And it doesn't mean that's going to happen on the 81st fight or the 82nd fight. Right. It could be the first time first that one. they fight where it could be that case. So do I favor Poeton? Of course, I favor Poeton. But a big, strong, heavy handed guy like Roundtree, if if Poeton's not really minding his P's and Q's, you just have to take the possibility of upset seriously. And I think on that level, I certainly give him a chance. BJ Penn, let me ask, let me ask you, let me ask you. BJ Penn used to say this. I don't have to be better than him every single day. I just got to be better than just him that, that night. night. That's it. And that's a huge that's deal. It. Go ahead, John. Sorry. Well, when, when you talk about that fight, though, a lot of people have complained saying they don't believe the clear route tree. Oh, the UFC is making that fight. He doesn't deserve it. It should be Ankalaya. I don't agree with that. And, and the reason I don't agree with it is I, I look and I go, I, Ankalaya definitely could be put in that spot of, you know, being the challenger for it. But he was given that chance one time and it didn't really perform in a way that you go, wow, I really want to watch him again. I'm not saying he's not a great fighter. He is. But Khalil has put together a very nice win streak. He's fought everyone they put in front of him. And at least they know the fight should be exciting. And I think there's going to be a knockout in it based upon the way both of these guys fight. I couldn't really disagree with that. I would add a, a slightly different layer to it, which is that, a lot of times, for the audience who doesn't know this, I'm not telling you guys anything you don't know, but that, you know, just you have to really appreciate, especially with the UFC's calendar, where they're just constantly pumping out shows. Yeah. They've got this show later on this month in the Middle East. Uncle Live is just going to be much more important for that uh, market, given his uh, he's, yep. he's Muslim, yeah. than, than some other, you know, they could have put Cleo Roundtree there. It would have been a fine fight. But again, they're trying to play to their market with the, with the people that they have. The point you also raise is certainly that like Ankalaev's had a couple of these, like the first Johnny Walker fight, then the 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 Blahovich fight, where it's like, dude, what are you doing here? Like this is not a disciplined way to fight on your part, or at least not, you know, it wasn't yeah. very thoughtful, certainly in the Blahovich. The thing I would add is that a lot of times fights get made, yes, who would be a good matchup? Does this guy deserve it? Blah, blah, blah. But also like We've got a calendar date we have to fill. Who is available? That's and then they just go down the list, and then they try to put a thing together. And so I think a big part of this is you couldn't headline this card with 
uh, the women's fight in the co-main event. It's a fine fight to have, but it's not going to headline the card. Call up Poetan, get on the bat phone, and then figure <laughs> out who's around. And that's has honestly he, how a lot of this is done. Yeah. Dude, has he not been their superhero? Yeah. I mean, Jesus Christ. He Every time they call, he's, yeah, let's go. No, I he's, agree. He's, he's, he's Cowboy Cerrone. That's yeah, exactly what he is right now. You know, he just he's at, at that level though where he'll fight anybody anytime. And the talk and conversation in terms of Ankalaev, my take on the Ankalaev situation is that if you're not ready when they call, then they move on. They don't have time to sit here and say, "Hey, what about next time? Hey, what about how about in a week or two? They're not. That's not their business model. It's never been their business model. I mean, they called me a couple times and I was like, yeah, I'm dealing with this injury. I could probably in with like three weeks after that, they're like, okay, we're going to move on. And I'm sure I was like a little bit upset at the time because you're like, damn, that's a really big name. I'd like to fight. That person needs to get fought because they're on a year long contract that needs three fights within that year offered to them. They have a structure in which the promotion needs to run. And so understanding that is something that uh, fighters can't take personal. They're like, oh, uncle, I was like, hey, I'm ready to fight you they're saving you or they're trying to keep you from me that's not the truth it's probably the furthest thing from the truth one of the most active fighters right now is uh poetan and so you've got to make sure that you're keeping him happy and whoever you can keep in front of him and i gotta be honest if uncle live had not said he must have said no along the way sometime some way hey these are the dates and i would agree with you and i didn't agree with you until i saw your clip earlier today when i was doing some research on you is that you basically said Putting him in Utah doesn't make sense. You're talking for, for what? Yeah, for what? Like, <laughs> you're not going to get a, a big Mormon crowd out there. I don't, I don't even it. look at it that way, but, but I can that see was point. a good, it, he brought it up, and I was like, yeah. I didn't even think about. It. That good totally point. slipped my mind. I didn't even think about that. And then you you hit it right on the head. Why would I put that fight together in Utah? I need this event. This event needs to happen. So let me put Khalil Roundtree in there. Both guys are knockout artists. Let's see what happens. Let's let the dust settle. And even if it, even if, um, even if Alex gets him out of there soon, you could see him, Alex, turn around, going, "Look, I'm 36 years old. Flip me around. Let's go. I want to turn around and do another fight here as soon as possible." That's his mo right now. I guess to go back to the Alex Pahea fight and the Khalil Roundtree fight, a lot of people were just talking about the power of uh, Khalil. A lot of people were talking, obviously, the fact that he is southpaw, the fact that it's going to be a little bit harder for him to land. But then you go back and you look. Uh, I believe. Um, uh, Hill was also a Southpaw. Somebody else that he had fought was a mm -hmm. Southpaw. Uh, Izzy switches left and right, dealing with that. Take so it away. Yuri, that, Yuri switches as switches well. Switches left, you know, left and right. His ability to time the left hook and land it, that is his MO. Khalil Roundtree also, John pointed this out the other day, stands directly in front of his opponents and likes to throw down. That could be a big problem for him. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like, okay, you're going to have open stance, so they're going to be hand fighting on that same side. That's going to make some kinds of things complicated for Poetan, but it's nothing he didn't see in glory or to yeah. your point with other opponents. Also, like when someone does that, and to your point, like how do you throw power? You have to be, you have to be rooted to the ground. I think that the leg kick, the the the, the step up leg kick for him is mm -hmm. going to be for Poetan is going to be big. The front the the front kick up the middle is going to be big for him. And he's real good about making guys reach. And when they reach, he uh, look at how he stopped poets. Excuse me, look how he Makes stopped Beery with the left hook yeah. when he was backing up, and then popped him when he was trying to extend on it. So it's like, again, like are there ways that Khalil could win? For sure, for sure. It's just you, you like, what's the one thing you can point to with Khalil that's like the dominant factor for him? Well, John, I'm not, John, I'm not exactly sure that I see it. John kind of thinks he that Khalil will probably be a little bit more of the faster, more explosive fighter. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I, okay, fair enough. He probably has faster hand speed. He's just going to throw yeah. with more regular intensity. I mm -hmm. think that's probably, uh, which makes the danger element certainly significant. Uh, it's just you know the uh, when you so it, fights don't always go this way, but when you sort of tally up the skills chart there and like who's got what, it's a it's an uphill climb. I yeah. think doable oh, for a Roundtree, but an uphill climb. I would agree. No